the Chico social media. Yeah. You know, you know, they Do you go, know Chico they go, Yeah, she, she DMs me all the time on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> nah, but the, please, the photograph for me. Yeah, Chicholina has to... She DMs to, me. Oh, ah, yeah, wow. We, and we, yeah. have a, we have a relationship on uh, Maybe I, I think that... BSMT. Bella raga, nuovo appuntamento, nuovo passa dal basement, bentornati, anzi benvenuti, magari qualcuno arriva qui per la prima volta, ciao, nel caso io sono Gianluca Gazzoli, il posto che vedete è il basement e qui stanno accadendo cose incredibili e ho spesso utilizzato anche eh, il termine leggendario e oggi è uno, di quei, è uno di quei casi, se ci state ascoltando guardando su YouTube continuate a farlo, iscrivetevi al canale, se lo state facendo su Spotify grandi continuate a farlo anche lì, anche lì sfruttate il video perché oggi probabilmente ci sono anche un po' di cose da vedere o, a, o da immaginare perché quando abbiamo creato tutto questo insomma sicuramente l'ambizione c'era il sogno c'era ma il fatto di poter ospitare una vera e propria leggenda vivente nel mondo dell'arte era qualcosa che potevamo diciamo sognare e che in realtà sta accadendo perché attenzione dal basement è passato anzi è qui David La Chapelle Nice to meet you, David. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's uh, an honor for us to have you here and a big honor, a real big honor. <laughs> Thank you very much. This is uh, the, the basement. Yeah, uh, cool studio. Do you like? I like it a lot. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very cool But studio. It's a place of, full of passion, full mm -hmm. collection, uh, some pieces of art, work art. Personal uh, person. memories. Yeah. Do, do you have a place like this oh, in yeah. your life? My studio. And, your studio. Oh, and my house to some extent, but the studio mostly, there's uh, props from so many shoots yeah. and uh, I'll make them and keep them because I can't get rid of them. They're beautiful and we reuse them for other things all the time but my house is full of props I, uh, furniture yeah but i think that's such an eclectic yeah. you know it, it really uh, becomes like hoarding after a while because i can't throw any of my props away because they're so beautiful yes uh, i think that your, your your studio is like an exhibition maybe it's like a pin in, inside of a pinball machine There's yeah. lots of neon and lights and it's not one of these white box yeah photo studios like laboratories it's very uh we have a workshop and and many shooting areas and hair and makeup and there's a theater and it's an old building i like old things okay and um, it's an honor for us to have you here because you you are a, a legend for uh, every uh for every person because you are one of the most important photographer in uh, in, in the world uh, do you know this uh, what is your feeling about uh, about this funny well i started you know just my dream was to make a living off of my art to be able to pay my bills but i never you know <laughs> and uh have a cabin in the woods one day and be able to afford vegetarian food <laughs> <laughs> in new york's east village that was my prayer and uh i never dreamed of um wow you know because i always thought what i would give in terms of my art Okay. you know my photography and not what i'd get i started in galleries i had turned my friend's loft into a gallery now she has 40 years later on a really blue chip very high-end amazing gallery in chelsea yeah. um but i took this living space and put an art show up of my early photographs when i was 21 and it was just what i could give the world what 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 i felt the world needed to see at that time and i was thinking a lot about angels and thinking about spiritual things because so many friends were were dying it was a, the best of times and the worst of times new york city yeah. in the 80s we had this incredible art explosion you know jean michel basquiat and keith Haring. you'd see them these were friends wow. these are people you'd see on the street i worked for interview magazine from that first exhibition led to more exhibitions people were not buying my photography so much then in the 80s but nef definitely not mine yeah <laughs> so I, i was uh doing weddings anything i could but you know all those things taught me even doing weddings taught me how to work under pressure you know so i, I learned how to work under intense pressure okay and be calm while i'm working so all those things taught me something that i applied to my photography and um then i started working at interview magazine for andy when andy yeah. was alive and um you know because my whole life i was going to be a painter drawing and painting my whole life and then i uh, dropped out of school from the, 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 the 
just trouble at school, lots of trouble. Wow. So I left at 14, and we lived close to New York City. So I just kept going to New York um, until I lived there, <laughs> and I stopped going to school uh, at 15, and uh, lived in New York, and because he's going to be a painter, an artist. Uh, it's incredible for us to hear you, because these, these tales are uh, incredible. <laughs> <laughs> the names are incredible. Yeah. So. It was normal. It was a village. It, the East Village was a concentrated area of an art explosion with so many so much going on and working uh, for Andy Warhol at the uh, interview magazine which was the most important popular culture magazine in the world really and you were in the center of mm. it all yeah because all every day you know there's rock stars and actors and artists and you know it was normal yeah. everybody in, you know coming to see andy in 80s <laughs> this is in uh, in in 80s here <clears throat> yeah in the 80s, in, in the 80s 80, 84 in the 80s. to 87 wow. and then i did andy's last portrait right before he died he you know he was going in for a, just a regular surgery and then he said i'm gonna die and we were all like no you know it's a it's a very normal operation it's simple gallbladder issue but it was because of him being shot in 68 okay. being a attempted assassination that he had a lot of problems internally okay but then the hospital made a big mistake and he died and you, your first job is with uh, was with uh, Andy War you yeah. you tell my first you job your first job regular job yeah you know, where <laughs> they hired me monthly to do photo shoots for the interview mm -hmm. yeah do, do you remember some what is your memory what are your memories about uh exciting him? um you know my, one of my first assignments was the beastie boys wow and they were not even signed to a record label and we met in times square just them and me and the camera <laughs> and uh It was just amazingly fun. Andy was very generous. He was funny. He was, you know, he's always depicted as a very aloof and detached. In fact, he was very interested. And he always wanted to know what us young kids were thinking. He always wanted to know what we were into. He wanted to know what, like, we liked. And Whoa. he would ask our opinion on things, you know? And, and, um, I didn't model myself after him in any way, but I'm the same way in my studio. I'm always asking, you know, the, I remember an intern, um, you know, was, was working for a long time. He said, you know, David, my first day, I was so shocked. He said, what do you think about this picture or that picture? I was, I was editing. Oh. He goes, I couldn't believe, like, he's asking me, <laughs> but I want to know, you know, this is how you find out, like what people react to because okay. sometimes you can't see it and you need it you need other other eyes you may not take their advice so i keep a very open circus like and on my shoots everyone can contribute it's very loose mm. you know and and the more chaos going around around me the more focused i can be you know and i like this energy music and the music always sets the tone for the shoot okay it, it tells the model it tells the subject what the mood is without words i, I just put the music on they see the set and and then they understand and, and usually what kind of music you well, choose it's different for okay each, each mood whatever mood i want okay you know if i want something sad and somber i'll play jeff buckley hallelujah ah. dolly parton dear god you know hello wow. hello god hello god <laughs> are you out there can you hear me i'll play this uh bridge over troubled water let it be that kind of music if i want something very serious and sad otherwise want high energy you know there's plenty of great stuff you know of okay. course you know i love all the 90s and 2000s you know hip-hop and that you know that that era and disco yeah. of course you know, the classic disco songs you know it was a you great you made yeah. me feel my <laughs> real like you can't sit still during that but usually i know many many photographers ask to the subject to scream loud ah 
uh, during the shooting or or uh, not? No. No. I'm the, I'm the only one screaming. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. And uh, how many times have you been in Italy now? Oh my gosh. Many. It's Italy, like home for you. It's incredible because my very first job ever as a photographer was for German Vogue to come to Rome. I was 21 and to shoot Italian actresses. And I was, I mean, for me, this was like the most incredible thing. Like, yeah. I'm Mira, I'm Milagro Milano. Okay, <laughs> Milagro Milano, yeah, but perfect. it was Rome. Yeah, for so, miracle for you. <laughs> it was a miracle. And I went to Rome to photograph Italian actresses, and I just remember sitting, and the, they put me in the Hassler. I'm, at okay. the, you know, I'm like, I can't believe this, and the doors were open, wow. and I'm looking at the Seven Hills, and I'm having, you know, I was scared to order room service, I had a cappuccino, and I'm sitting there, I just was crying, like, I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> and uh, one of the actresses was uh, Alessandra Mussolini, ah, yeah. 17 years old. Ooh. Uh, you know, and but you did you know it I knew, or no? I, I knew, who, yeah, I knew, I knew Alessandro Mussolini's grandpa. Yeah, yeah, we well, know, we know. know. I didn't know, I didn't know her, but I knew her auntie. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> Miss Sophia Loren. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I didn't, okay. You know, I knew, I knew her, her heritage. So um, you are you, you, usually. I, I think that you pay attention to the details. Uh, have you found some difference between this Italy? between from the whole of Italy there's a big difference between the well actually you know that first trip I felt really in love with Rome I felt like never in my life I felt that I'd been somewhere before that I hadn't okay. and I remember walking it was October in the 80s and I was walking at night through it through Rome and there was no people there's no tourists then you know not like today Okay. Where there's tourism tw 12 months out of the year. It was so quiet, yeah. you know, and I was walking through Rome, and um, that's a Morrissey th song. Walking through yeah. Rome with my heart on a string. <laughs> You're a Dear singer. God, please help me. <laughs> um, I love this song. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I felt like I'd been there, you know, and then going to Capella Sistina and. Uh, was nobody there really just you know a few people it was in incredible yeah like incredible and then my very first uh museum exhibition was in rome palazzo de exposizione so rome and italy uh, there's a connection it's incredible the people love me i love the people they, they love my art and i love being here i love i love the culture uh there's so many places to discover just this trip we went to brescia mm -hmm. um the museum has a, a show there of a, ro a room with some new works and um some other works of mine and i mean it was incredible brescia this perfect yeah. sized city it nestled in the mountains you know with lots of energy because so many the university and f uh, full of life but I never even heard of this place, and wow. I'm so I'm still discovering Italy. Yeah, it, it's not like Maui in uh, Hawaii. It's it, different. <laughs> it's very different because now you you live in. We uh, still get we get tourists too. Yeah, <laughs> now you you live uh, in Maui. I live in Maui. My studio is in L.A., and I keep a house there so I can you know when I work. Because we spend a lot of time building the sets and preparing for the shoots, you know. Okay. And that's the great thing about having. But how, how many how many days usually you stay in, uh, in Maui? Oh gosh, like this summer I was there for four months and I was there during the fire. It was yeah. which, which was a terrible time to <sighs> terrible thing to witness, you know, this fire because I had been dreading something like this because it had been so dry. I live on the wet side. I live on the east side of Maui, which is very rainforest. Okay. So the fire happened in Lahaina, which is more dry, and it was extremely windy that day and just devastating. Um, before you told you told me about New York City, why you moved from New York to Maui in that period well, of your life? I was actually was in, I never thought I'd leave New York. And there's a Rome and New York are very similar in a weird way. There's an earthiness, at least at that time in the eighties. So there was a kind of earthiness in, in the East Village and there was an earthiness in Rome that I felt 
like at home in both places. And then I was working more and more on the West Coast because I started shooting a lot more celebrities and I loved the sun and the, you know, I was starting color then and the colors were so rich in Los Angeles with the, with the hot sun and plus you have all the prop houses, the movie houses, the movie people and I would use all the movie people for my still shoots. So I used all the industry of the Hollywood films for my stills which had never been done for photography, set building and stuff. Wasn't really like that in, in, in photography. You either shot on location or with a gray seamless in a studio. But very there are very few conceptual pictures done with fashion and celebrity at that time. Okay. Like, practically none. That really changed the way the photography looked. And it was huh. kind of like in a, a big uh, upheaval okay. <laughs> when I came okay. out. And, okay. you know, People loved it, people hated it, and yeah. it was controversial, but it definitely got attention. And before you, you told us uh, about uh, Rome and Capella Sistina, See. that moment in 2006 changed your no, life? Well, no, I mean, really, that, that's kind of a legend because I really wanted to do the deluge before that. And the, but yes, I mean, my first trip to the Capella Sistina was in the 80s, and then later it came in, in the 2000s. And at that time, um, they arranged a private, um, when the museum was, cl when, the, when the, the chapel was closed, okay. I got to go um, right when the people were leaving and spent 30 minutes, 30 al minutes? alone in the wow. Capella Sistina, which it's really incredible. I mean, you just can't help but cry. Imagine, you know, I've, I said this earlier, but you know, we see so many images with the phone, with magazines, photographs, our whole life since yeah. we're babies, right? Imagine people that time, 500 years ago, mm -hmm. who don't see anything, no movies, no magazines, no printing press, no nothing. And then they make a pilgrimage to Rome and they come in and see this thing that still today yeah. blows us away. You know, it's still today is so powerful. It's you know, the sublime, incredible work of art. You can't imagine a human being did this. It's so overwhelming, so beautiful. Imagine somebody coming from a village, you know, who hasn't left that village their whole life, and this happened. Yeah, and they come, crazy. And they come pilgrimage to Rome, yeah. and they go see this thing. They must have had to have had catch people from faint you know yeah. people would be fainting and um, but that moment for you is like an epiphany oh, i've always loved michelangelo um i had the you know i wanted to do the deluge mm. about the flood of the future but you make the flood of the future rather than the flood of noah the flood of the future although the the next time the that that you know, instead of flood it's going to be fire according to the bible but uh, I wanted to do the flood of the future. Okay. So this sort of like idea of uh, 20 years ago, we did this like kind of, or 2006, yeah, Thir 13 years. Yeah. Whatever it was. 17 years. <laughs> more or less, more or matter. less. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to do a modern version and photography of this idea of the deluge of the people dealing with life uh, when it's about to end, you know, at the end of time, at the apocalypse, at the, at the, um, the end of the world and instead of fighting each other off they're helping each other so I did this big mural and yeah. we spent a lot of time making this well this and set and flash forward we are here in uh, 2023 with uh, an a great new exhibition in in rome mm -hmm. uh, the station of cross yes. the name i saw many pictures of this uh, mm. of this exhibition it was uh, it, it's uh, it's uh, crazy because there is Jesus Christ, there is uh, many flash colors. Uh, it's very, it's yeah, very beautiful. It's a different way to see Stations of the Cross, um, but the emotion that uh, Tedwa brought to it yeah. is what grounds it in uh, sincerity. That's what brings it, it's, it's his emotion, because he was so committed to the project. Mm. Uh, he really could be an actor, like yeah. a great actor, because he fasted before we shot, and he put so much effort into this commitment, into yeah. this project. And I was doing his album cover, and I was looking for a Jesus, some, and it was taking me forever, and I couldn't find the right person. And then I saw him, and I, I just saw that I needed somebody who had very sensitive eyes, but also looked like they could come from Nazareth, Nazareth, um, in Middle Eastern, you know, that part of the world. Uh, 
Um, and there he was with no tattoos and for uh, an Italian rapper, because you yeah. know the French, <laughs> German, Italian rappers kind of overdo it. You know, they try so hard to be extra gangster. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> A little yeah, bit extra. Usually. Ma- a little, oh, you know, trying a little too hard with the gold chains and the face tattoos, ah, you know? No. Um, and I was expecting this from him and he was so perfect and he had these very sensitive eyes and then I found out that his nickname was The Poet. Yeah. It makes sense. He's really, like, different. He's following his own thing. Like, he's not following anyone but him he's got his own path yeah. like you know he's marching to the beat of his own drummer that we have a s- expression in america because um, the, the starring of this exhibition is is tedua yeah. uh, he is a uh, jesus he really he, looked, jesus. he even was crying at one point you know wow yeah it was it was intense do, do you remember his reaction when he arrives on set he was so into it you wow. know he was just really co- uh, was just focused and committed and it was days of shooting and he was really just gave it a hundred percent yeah i think that it was really proud of of this i, I was i couldn't have thought i found a better person yeah uh, really really was and it found me i was sort of an answered prayer because i really couldn't find someone and then he called me to his record album and and i saw him and i said oh my gosh he's got these eyes sensitive eyes yeah that, like forgiving i really was important that he had this look and not too pretty not like a model okay. you know he's got yeah. a really real. natural face you know that's not not too handsome you know yeah so it was a particular look i needed i know Tedua, and he is a, a really good guy yeah, and good guy. a real guy yeah. a real recognized real maybe yeah. maybe <laughs> uh, but f- what is the, the creative process for 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 this job for example because you don't have a uh, a green screen no. Uh, no it's a real no and in fact i didn't have an art director i built all the sets myself with my my assistants we, we put all these sets together <clears throat> and it was so unusual And at first I was going to paint everything beige, you know, on the background. And then we saw these weird colors together, mm. you know, and it was such a collage. And I'd never seen color used in the Stations of the Cross. And so it was very different, you know, and the, the whole process of, of making the sets and the, and, the, and the clothing. And at one point I got... Um, Colleen Atwood, the costume designer, to make mm. the Ascension for the, for the robe he's wearing, the Ascension. She does all Tim Burton movies. She has four Academy Awards for costume design. Okay. So, because I couldn't wow. get the robe correct, I shot it four times. I couldn't get it correct. So, finally, she came on board and made this robe for Christ, and it was perfect perfection. Okay, wow, it's, it's great. And you, in, in your life, uh, with photography or other, um, other arts, you. Uh, shoot uh, the, the greatest uh, artists uh, uh, in the story, uh, artists, uh, actors. Uh, uh, I think that you have many, many stories about this. Oh, there's so <laughs> many think. stories. Yeah, yeah. but I, I saw um, the iconic cover about Travis Scott, for example, mm. or Eminem in the past, Britney mm. Spears. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, do you remember some things? Or I don't think that you have uh, your favorite. Maybe it's like a song, maybe. I don't well, know. I remember everything. Yeah, <laughs> everything, everything. Uh-huh. Yeah. Will I tell everything? I probably no. would, wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't work again if I told everything. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> But there's some things I can talk about, you know. What's a, you have any particular questions about? Well, if, um, for example, you shot uh, Eminem in, in one of the best period of uh, his life, in the he's prime time. Yeah, he's be- just beginning and... Uh, And he was so happy, you know, and it was, he didn't even know he was going to be on the cover of Rolling Stone. He just thought it was their first shoot and it was a cover. And he was just so happy. He was rapping all day. And I remember asking him, I said, is it like M and M, like the candy? Yeah. Or <laughs> he's like, no, it's E, M, E, M, E, N. <laughs> and he was just singing all day. He was rapping all day. He was so happy. And then years later, I saw him at the MTV Awards. I was there seated next to him and I said I said I remember me and at first he just was like and he was oh because I was from the old days okay. you know and he just jumped up and gave me this biggest hug but there was a weight um you know with that much fame it, 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 it's heavy okay and I've seen people suffer 
really suffer. You know, Whitney Houston, Amy Winehouse, so, uh, so many uh, friends really going through it. George Michael. You know, you ask yourself, you, Britney. Yeah. You, know, you, you see these people, and, you, and I, I photograph Britney more than anybody else, any other photographer, and, and videos, and and all the rest since the beginning of her career, her first cover to the last video. And I've seen so many like changes, and 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 the weight of that type of fame is so enormous. And today, especially, you cannot get away with with the the social media is constant, you know, and of the the paparazzi is relentless and the private life people can't get enough of this and and people really love to see the downfall yeah you know they love to see the the in the they praise the star of michael jackson and then they love when the crash they love the scandal and the, mm. the downfall and we have to ask ourselves why why we why do we put people so high on this pedestal worship them like religious figures get tears you know see people crying i would see people crying when i'd walk in with someone with paris hilton i was like you gotta be kidding <laughs> you know yeah. they're like crying like they're seeing the madonna <laughs> no. and and then they love the the crash and they get really excited about this maybe it's because all oh, my life isn't so bad you know i i can't pay my bill i can't pay this bill and that person's having trouble too mm. who's so famous and so rich and has everything and, and they're having problems maybe they feel better about their lives living th through them yeah. so first we live vicariously through them on stage and how fabulous they are and, and amazing and then we kind of feel better about our our own troubles when we see them going through troubles i don't know what, what the psychology behind it is but it's a very weird we have to look at this why we take such pleasure in people's suffering who are who we once worship yeah and and that we enjoy and they they I came to a realization that these stars, Whitney Houston, who, who I worked with a lot, these people gave more than they got. Michael Jackson gave more to the world than he received. Mm. You know, Whitney Houston gave more to the world than she received. You know, um, Amy Winehouse gave more to the world than she got back. And you wonder if it's a reverse, almost like, a punishment from a past life like you know i don't believe in karma and stuff i mean i believe in you know i'm a christian but you think like what 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 is why would they be punished like this you know they're giving so much michael imagine how many hours of dancing and joy he's given the world and yet the world persecuted him and he was completely innocent yeah and you know, i've really studied this That's, oh, more so than, i think more than anyone i know <laughs> I've, I've studied michael jackson's yeah i read every you know the court the transcripts talked to the you know the president of california bar he was a hundred percent but in in, in, but I know in italy you guys don't care so much about that so, which yeah. is kind of amazing which is really great for Italy that you're not into this cancel culture so much. No. Right? No, yeah, yeah. But mm, is that true? No, what? The cancel culture. You're not doing No, this no, yet. yeah. In Italy now the cancel culture is a is a, a big topic. It's a yeah. big topic. Yeah, not not here. like in the uh, US. US is always uh, more, but now in Italy is a and a big public you love topic. A scandal here and everybody no. know. No. Yeah. <laughs> nah, everybody, everybody loves the scandal. But, and, but yeah, and then, you know, then the scandal can run. But the scandal engages the social media. Yeah, you know, you know, they Do you go, know they go, Yeah, she, she DMs me all the time on Instagram. Yeah, <laughs> ah, but the, please the photo get for me. Yeah, Chicholina has to. She DMs to, me. Ah, oh, you know, wow, and we yeah, have a, we have a relationship on. Uh, the maybe I, I think that many celebrities ask to him to photograph. Yeah. Yeah, no, and, and that's nice when they when. But when something they, relationship born was born in this way or is impossible with, who? with uh, maybe some artists uh, send DM. a DM yeah. or yeah that's happened okay that's happened through DMs wow what, what is your relationship with social media very little I never looked at my Facebook yeah <laughs> I've never gone no on, only never art in my life gone on Facebook believe it or not ah okay never. and I I look at my page on instagram and i'll talk to some of my uh comments and okay and i read the comments and i answer back and things like that yeah. and, can and i tag you on instagram sure. after this interview but, but <laughs> i don't really look at anyone else's instagram okay it makes me feel weird like yeah. i feel like 
I, I get up, I, lo I look at it a little bit. I'm like, oh man, I'm missing out. And how come I wasn't invited? And they're looking like they're having more fun. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I find a, I, I always feel weird <laughs> after I look at wow. Instagram. <laughs> But everybody today, everybody today feel feel like a photographer with the Instagram, with the yeah, smartphone. True. They photograph their bodies a lot. Yeah. I do look at YouTube for my okay. in information mostly. But you know, you can't. What's very weird about YouTube is that you know you'll be reading about the war, and you know in is like in Israel and in Gaza right now, reading about this. And the next thing that comes up yeah. is, you know, Kylie Jenner, you know, and yeah. it may be, so then it, it's, it's, it's a weird because it becomes like entertainment. Yeah. Okay. You know, so we're ingesting it in such a strange way, you know, cause it's all mixed up like that. Right. So you're, you're, you're reading about a topic. You want to know what's going on in the world. You want to, you know, you don't want to be like oblivious to what's happening. The, the, things in politics, things in the, in the environment or whatever, you know, read about the very serious subject or watch a piece about, you know, nutrition or fitness or something. And then right after that, it'll be uh, something like super gossipy that you didn't really want to know about Justin Bieber mm. getting a Starbucks. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, something stupid. So you, you, you have these in, intense, you know, important... Um, serious topics right next to you know someone got their lips overfilled with with stuff and their lips are too big okay you know celebrity gossip so it's a strange juxtaposition yeah. between information and 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 gossip no oh, it's, it's important on, on the last question uh if you have to choose only one your photo Uh, about uh, th that uh, this photo represent yourself uh, what what do you choose with an artist with a an actor uh, maybe um, the the toss up between the deluge and michael jackson p p wow. with christ Okay. I love this one because the Perfect. Pieta is like a symbol of the greatest loss. It also references, you know, Michelangelo and, and Jesus. And so maybe those two. Yeah. Thank you, David. It was an great honor. No, so yeah, nice to be here. I am curious about your new, new exhibition in Rome, the Station of the Cross. Yes. In, uh, yeah. Galleria Deodato. Yeah. The name yes, is correct. Exactly. If you If you want, go to... To, to live in a great experience. Come by and yeah. see, the, see the pictures in a new way. Thank you. Thank, thank you very, very much. much. David La Chapelle è passato dal basement. Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. it's your audience. <laughs> <laughs>